Those vacant lot owners that have put trailers on their lots for the past years have tried to have their cottages repaired after the 1985 storm. Some cottages were destroyed and some were just slightly damaged. The county told them, in a state of panic, I believe, that the road would not be rebuilt and they had to either tear down their cottage or move it off Hastings. Some of those moved cottages are still being used today in St. Williams and Booth Harbour. Some of the damaged cottages were burned by the county. In 1985, no one really cared about the property owners who had had their dreams destroyed. In 1985, no one really cared about the property rights of those people on Hastings Drive. You can change that. You can right a very big wrong. Please do the right thing here. I'm not asking you to allow us to build three-story condos, dig out deep basements, or put in street lights. I'm asking you to save the county hundreds of thousands of dollars in litigation costs and allow what has been allowed by this county since at least 1985. These recreational vehicles are as much of the color of the landscape on Hastings Drive as the 23 cottages are. In fact, they are as much a part of the landscape um, on the rest of Long Point as those 800 cottages are. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Any questions from councillors? Councillor Huffman? Chop through you to the deputation. Hi, I just have a couple questions. I just want to clarify. Um, so when you're talking about the rebuilding of cottages, you're talking about families who had cottages, or not families, we'll go property owners who had cottages on the, a lot mm -hmm. and the cottage was destroyed. Right. So you're saying that you're advocating for them to be able to have a trailer on their lot. In a perfect world, I would like everyone to be able to rebuild their cottage, but because it's hazard land, they can't. So this is the next best thing. They own the properties. They want to use the properties. They, they had those properties so they can enjoy it. What about the people who bought properties after the fact who didn't have those lands? So there's, to me, that's two different issues, right? That you have people who actually owned the property, yep. you know, okay. had a structure on yep. it, the structure was lost, mm -hmm. and then they're kind of, and then we have people who bought yep. structures after. So the other thing too, just to okay, clarify. Can I, can I say something to yeah, that? sure. Yeah. I don't think there's a difference. Okay. There were, there were lots for sale, people lost cottages and then just didn't do anything, sold their lots and people bought lots because they wanted to fish, they wanted to launch boats. So there's no difference between people who bought, who have a family, who have a lot that has been in their family for generations, or people who just bought a lot 10 years ago with the hope of spending the day on their property. Respectfully, there is a little bit of a difference because you said they bought a lot because, you know, to go fishing and enjoy yeah. for the day, but then... And know, hoping to put trailers. a trailer on. So I just want to clarify, change house, would that be another word for bunky or is that just more of a Northern Ontario thing and a... Okay. Thing? Specifically for this county, a bunky yep. is something that you sleep in. Okay. It's a extra bedroom. A change house is something that's under 108 square feet that you can use to change out of a wet bathing suit. Okay, so suit those change houses, those aren't for sleeping quarters no. at all. Okay. And now in regards to our, um, the previous council meetings that were shown, I very clearly, yes, did see some staff in the room who did talk about um, vehicles being permitted. And it was about wheels and license plates, etc. And it was specified parking overnight. So, with the trailers that are there now on any of these lots at Hastings Drive, can they just be hooked up to a hitch right now and just pulled off these lots, or would they have to be? Would there have well, to there's be no trailers on right now. Well, but in the season, okay. Um, yes, they can. They've been backed up onto those trailers, and they have their. The wheels are still on, they put the stabilizing legs down, but if someone said get that trailer off, I'm sure that trailer can be off that property within the hour. They back their okay. vehicle up, hook it on, and drive it off. Okay, and the other two lots that you have, you have two cottages mm -hmm. and two lots, and what do you have on those other those two lots? I have a boat ramp on one, mm -hmm. um, and the other one is just a vacant lot. So you don't have any trailers no. on your lots? Okay, thanks. Councillor Michelli? <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, Mrs. Weber. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> just uh, maybe to uh, follow up from uh, Councillor Huffman's comments. So you have no trouble with people having trailers on Hastings Drive, and you personally do not have a trailer. 
nope, I, have, I don't have a trailer. And I look at the, the people, I'll call them trailer owners, just as a general term, they're neighbors. They're my neighbors on my properties on Hastings Drive. And the only difference is they are not allowed to build a cottage. And so this is how they're enjoying their property. Okay, and you would agree then that they should have that right because it is their property that they pay taxes on. Absolutely, and wh what they're parking on their property is the same thing as me parking a car overnight on my property. They've been legally deemed vehicles. Okay, thank you. Madam Mayor, can I ask a couple Carry more? On. Thank you. Um, you mentioned uh, during your presentation that um, the uh, sometimes during certain times of the year, the road on Hastings Drive floods over. Yes. And um, I just kind of was, when you were mentioning that, I was sort of thinking, and I guess it's just, I think all of us uh, have been to uh, places like Port Dover or Turkey Point at various times of the year, and it is flooded over quite a bit. Most of the time, in fact, you know, I'm not sure if I remember a time when you couldn't, but most of the time, even in those very flooded times, those roads are passable. And so I think the same thing is true mm -hmm. in, on Hastings Drive. In a previous deputation that I did um, in talking about this, I had approached Terry Dick, the fire chief in Simcoe, asked him over the previous five years how many times emergency vehicles had been called to a property on Hastings Drive. And we classified emergency vehicles as fire trucks, ambulances, paramedics, police cars, whatever. He had told me that there were six instances over the previous five years, and in all those six instances, those emergency vehicles were able to get to the property that they were called to and do what they had to do. Um, they were all able to get down the road. And what you have to realize is, at any given time, we have garbage trucks, recycling trucks, water delivering trucks, um, septic pump out trucks, which are all heavy vehicles that make their way down Hastings Drive. There's a turnaround at the end, so they, they can just drive straight down, turn around in the cul-de-sac, or I call it a cul-de-sac, and then come back out. So there's not a problem with heavy vehicles getting down Hastings Drive. I see, and if I can just ask a, another question regarding these floods and, yep. and accessibility. Uh, and you mentioned earlier in your presentation that there is only one way in and only one way out of Long Point, and, and anybody who's been there kind of recognizes yep. how serious that can be. Um, in, the, in the event of an extreme weather event, mm -hmm. um, who would be able to evacuate or move off of their properties faster? People on Hastings Drive or people who would be camped at the provincial park at the other end of Long Point? I would say people on Hastings Drive. That's once you cross the causeway, that's the first road that you hit. You turn right onto Hastings, left onto the rest of of uh, Long Point. And another um, issue about Hastings Drive too is there are only a few places on Hastings Drive that have access to the lake. Um, so in the case of an emergency, if there's a lake emergency, a water emergency, and someone on the campground is drowning. Right now the Coast Guard has to drive or would normally have to drive, get in the inner bay, drive all the way around the point, find those people, recover because they're not going to get them rescued. Um, one of the property owners has a um, dock and a ramp that the Coast Guard uses. They have keys to his gate. So there's, and he, he has a change house on his property for Coast Guard people to um, change into a, in, the, in the event that they're in the water and they have to get someone. So um, Hastings Drive is a very um, important asset to the Long Point community. And it's just that it's an important asset because it's resort area, it's recreational area, and people want to retire there. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. I have some Thank other you. questions, but I want to be fair and let my fellow councillors okay. ask. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Through you to our deputation. So would it be fair to say that it's suitable for the Coast Guard to leave a vehicle on a property for day use if they were going out for um, a rescue? They would drive a vehicle, use, use the, the ramp on this property owners? Yep. The end. county widened the road um, on the north side of Hastings Drive, opposite to this person's property, and there are parking signs in effect that say that allow parking for the Coast Guard truck and trailer and everything this you have to realize this Coast Guard rescue 
boat is 24 feet long. We're not talking the little six foot dinghy. This is a huge um, boat. And the property owner in the past has kept a backhoe on his property so that when the Coast Guard backs up into his property, sometimes the water is choppy. They have trouble getting it in, so they unhook their boat from their truck. He hooks it up to his backhoe and he just backs the boat right in the water. The people are, the rescue guys are sitting in the boat and he just gets them out there. So it's easy. Well, thank you. And I, I would say that that's probably very kind of that property owner. And if it's yeah. suitable for a backhoe or suitable for someone to uh, use for, for a safety rescue mission and, and leave um, a vehicle on the property for the day, then that's pretty self-explanatory. Any further questions? In all your years there, have you ever known anybody to, prior to this past year, be charged for having a trailer on Hastings Drive? Nope. It's, it's been a nice, quiet community, and it's just this year. And I, I haven't been charged. I believe there, there are, I believe there are 16 charges for various things. I'm not quite sure, but this year is the first time. So I think what Councillor Hoffman was trying to get at, that there are, she believes there to be a distinction between somebody that had a cottage prior to 1985 and then somebody who acquired a property in more recent years. It would be safe to assume that anybody that acquired a property in these recent years, given that no charges had ever been laid and mm -hmm. until, let's say, 2014, when this issue came to Council again, yep. that one would have just purchased a property and assumed that they could park a trailer there. In fact, one of the property owners, uh, when they bought, when he and his wife bought his property, Mayor Trevally was in charge and said to him, okay, what's going to happen here? Should I buy a vehicle? Should I spend my money buying a trailer or should I spend my money on litigation? And he was told, there's nothing that says you can't have a trailer on the property, so I suggest you buy a trailer. Put it on your property for the summer months and enjoy it. And is that in writing, do you know, on behalf of the county? Um, I don't know. Any further questions? Councilman Shelley. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Mrs. Weber, <clears throat> um, there's always been a bit of a concern to you. Your PowerPoint uh, indicates uh, that these cottages are very well built and they're very sturdy. Uh, and they are built with the intention of surviving high water and storms. Um, you have lived there a long time. You are there all the time in the summer months. Do you ever feel unsafe when you're sleeping or sitting in your house when there's some bad weather? Um, absolutely not. Um, Mike, I would say all the cottages there are pretty high up. They're... Um, the water never gets up under the cottages. Um, I've never heard of anyone who feels unsafe. And if, if you do, you, you, you know, you can leave. With, in this day of social media, nobody is going to be caught off guard all of a sudden being stuck on Hastings Drive at risk of drowning or whatever, being cut off from the rest of the world for a few days um, because they've got fair warning and, you know, can get off. But I've... There has never been an instance where even on big storms where the, the wave rushes, the waves are high and they splash up against decks and cottages and that, trailers, uh, people are concerned that trailers are going to be washed up and float away and whatever chemicals are in the trailer are going to dump in the water. There has never been an issue where anything has been damaged because of, because of, water action or anyone has been hurt or felt unsafe because of high water. And Mrs. Weber, Madam Mayor, if it's okay. And Mrs. Weber, um, you've already kind of described, are any of the trailers on Hastings Drive uh, what you would describe as unsightly? In my professional trailer opinion, no. <laughs> and Mrs. Weber, I value your trailer opinion because you do not have a trailer. That gives you additional credibility. <laughs> Thanks. Thank also, I, I'm wondering if, because uh, I know you're aware because you're a very uh, integral member of, of that whole community, how many trailers are we talking about here? If someone were allowed to put trailers there, how many trailers in total would we be dealing with? Okay. Without you holding this against me, I think 11. Okay. I think there are 11. 10 or 11. Anyone who's going to put a trailer on their property has had a trailer on their property. 
right now and, and for years. Is that number is around 11? 11, 10 or 11. I mean, it's not 11 or 19. <clears throat> it's like 10 or 11. I'm just not sure the exact number. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any further questions? Councillor Huffman? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to the deputation. Um, are there any other places in Norfolk County that have trailers that allow them? Other than like a private properties? Yeah. Um, that well, you're aware of. okay. As an example, um, my family, my first family cottage is on Woodstock Ave mm -hmm. on Long Point proper, down near the old campground. Uh, there are a number of cottages that have trailers in their driveway that they use those trailers. I mean, they use them, I think they may go south in the winter, but they also use those trailers in the summertime as guest rooms. Okay. You know, they've got the awnings out and everything. So <coughs> I, I, I have no idea. I'm assuming they're legal. I can't speak on that. But they have every summer, there are trailers out on properties and they're there year after year after year. So you must allow them. Well, I did some research, and there are many places, actually almost every place I came across that I researched in Ontario, that where cottages are, trailers are not permitted. Um, and, and now, I guess my question would be is that would, there would also, I guess, be places in Port Dover that would be on the water that then they could then have trailers, um, similar to the situation in Hastings, correct? <laughs> You know what? I, think I can't that's speak. Probably a question I, that's better directed. Well, to no, I can't speak for that. Well, but, I think some of the other questions okay, were but, as well. So. But but my, okay. may I reiterate here this this whole bylaw that that we are discussing with the legal nonconforming is specific to 150 lots on Hastings Drive. It is not a waterfront bylaw for all of Southern Ontario. It was specifically pinpointed for the 150 lots on Hastings Drive. So whether trailers are allowed on Port Dover or not, I really don't care because nobody is trying to get those trailers off. People want to keep their trailers on Hastings Drive because this bylaw specifically states Hastings Drive, not Long Point, just Hastings Drive. And that's, that's a very big issue to the property owners on Hastings Drive because we, we feel very um, picked on. Like, why that? It, Hastings Drive is 3.2 kilometers long. It's a very small road, you know. Ms. Dusling, maybe we could direct that question to you. Would you be able to tell me whether or not um, trailers are allowed in driveways on the rest of Long Point? Thank you. Um, to the mayor, to council, um, I can let you know that through our zoning bylaw, a tent and trailer park is only permitted in the OST zone. Excuse okay. me, OST zone. Uh, trailers and RVs are not permitted as a right in other zones. However, there isn't anything that prohibits the parking of a trailer in a driveway. And our bylaw, I would assume that that means uh, for storage purposes. So from my understanding, a tent and trailer park would be more than one tent and trailer. That would be a proper park, like a private park. There's private trailer parks in Langton, correct? Oh, and other locations. To you, the mayor, that's correct. Okay. So in terms of somebody, we know that there's been bylaw enforcement on Hastings Drive with regards to trailers. Uh, has there been bylaw enforcement anywhere else in the county with regards to trailers being parked in cottage areas. Through you, the mayor, I can't speak to that tonight, but I can find that information out for you. Any further questions? Councilor Shelley. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, this isn't necessarily just a, a question, but it's just kind of a comment. Um, uh, just, you know, after hearing your presentation, Mrs. Weber, I. Um, I just kind of am thinking, and I guess I just find one thing a little bit troubling, is that, um, you know, we're here today, and, you know, some very good people who are residents of Norfolk County have actually had to come here and plead with council to have their rights as property owners listened to, and the properties on which they are taxpayers. And I, I just find that a, a little bit 
of a problem. Thank you, Councilor Shelley. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. Thank you. Okay, can we proceed with the next deputation first and then? Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you to staff, there are a few comments that I just want some clarification on from our deputation. First, Mr. Cridland, um, can you confirm if emergency vehicles are able to get down the road? Uh, deputation said there are six um, emergencies, and I just want some confirmation on that. Through the chair to the councillor. Yeah, I can't really comment on the deputation's conversation with Chief Terry Dix, but I would take it to, to be truthful if there were six they got there. My only concern would be um, at times of high water and, of course, winter conditions, um, the road it can, can, can be difficult at times. And uh, another question to um, Mr. Baird. I would like to know if you would like to have a chance to respond to the video we saw. It's from 2014. don't know if any more context needs to be provided about the video. If you would like to say anything. Oh, through the mayor, no, that's fine. That's, uh, that's the fact. Yep. And also, would you like to um, respond to the shoreline protection applications that were made reference to that it's the county roads department's applications being held up that are having the road flood? Um, in, in fairness, Councillor, um, I've been the general manager of public works now since uh, uh, late summer, so I'm not specifically aware of <coughs> permits, etc. Um, but again, uh, I'd, I'd be glad to look into that and provide an answer if you wish. Please do. Thank you. So, sorry, Councillor, could you repeat that question for me? Um, Mary said that the uh, Norfolk County owned properties don't have the shoreline protection. So Norfolk County owns 48 properties currently on Hastings Drive. There was a motion, in fact, last year uh, that three of those properties, uh, there was a request for a staff report on uh, evaluation um, so that they could be declared as surplus lands and put up for sale. To my knowledge, um, from speaking with Ms. Harrison today, um, I, and I have seen the report, staff did prepare that report. The properties were never actually put up for sale because there was a motion to defer it until such time as after the hearing. However, um, I haven't seen it on the action items list. Uh, somehow it's been missed inadvertently and the properties that were declared by the previous council as surplus never actually were actioned on. However, Further to that, within the 48 properties, also to my knowledge and previous council, and it's something else I haven't seen on the action list, was that they did move for shoreline protection. Um, as, as part of the budget, I believe, or at least a motion was passed at council for that to be done on Long Point um, in 2017, and I don't believe that that has happened, correct? Uh, Your Worship, I, I really don't have an answer for you, okay. but I fully intend to, to find that out for you. So the one thing that I have heard from the residents in that regard is because Norfolk County owns such a large swath of properties, almost a third of the properties on Hastings, uh, that while the private property owners have maintained their shoreline protection, it's in fact the shoreline protection within that band of 48 properties that hasn't, uh, hasn't been maintained over the years. Thank you. Councillor Van Passen. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to follow up to Councillor Taylor's uh, question, uh, some of the historical background stuff on the OMB hearing, there was great concerns from uh, Fire and EMS about uh, the possibility of the road. And I was just wondering, was, is that only if uh, EMS has to go pick up somebody in a trailer that they're worried about it and the existing cottages are okay? <laughs> through the mayor of the councillor. Uh, I believe those comments were um, in regards to, m back to my um, comments to Councillor Taylor, if there's high water on the road and uh, in, in winter conditions. If, if I've but, answered But that would question. apply to the cottage as well. Sorry, sorry, yes, correct. Any further questions? Councillor Michelle? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'm just uh, kind of thinking with all of this in mind, uh, I'm, I'm prepared to make a motion 
And uh, my motion is. You don't want to hear the other deputation? Um, I'm sorry. I forgot about the other deputation, <laughs> Madam Mayor. My apologies to the second deputation. You are extremely important as well. Forgive me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If you would like to make a motion, though, to receive uh, Ms. Weber's uh, deputation as information, that would be helpful. Mayor, I think that's what I intended to do. Okay, yes. perfect. <laughs> do I have a seconder? Councillor Martin, all those in favor? That is carried. Okay, if um, the next we'll call up, uh, Mr. Cork, if you would please come and uh, state your address, and you have about 10 minutes. Okay. Well, thank you, Mayor and Councillors, for letting me speak tonight. Um, my name is Stephen Cork. Uh, my cousin and I are uh, the property owners of 165 and 167 Hastings Drive. Um, our family's been on Hastings Drive for 72 years now. Um, we've never abandoned it. We've constantly maintained it. And we've constantly used it over the years. Um, most of my family's from Brantford, so it's our way or so. Um, I do agree in principle with uh, the motion uh, for trailers uh, established prior to the OMB ruling date uh, to be legal non-conforming going forward. Um, and the reasoning for that is uh, uh, after, the, after the ruling date, a memo was released by the chief building official uh, basically stating that any legally established structures prior to the OMB ruling could continue on as legal non-conforming. And I, I believe in that in principle also, but I feel like it's missing some information in the sense that not just structures can be legal non-conforming, but also uses. And structures are easy to define, but uses um, are not as easily defined. A use could be anything. It could be having a campfire at night. It could be fishing. It could be parking a boat trailer there. Uh, it could be parking a camper trailer. It could be parking a car even, you know, after dusk. Uh, and, you know, I do believe this motion kind of explores legal non-conforming rights on all properties for uses now, that being trailers, not just structures. Um, so I'd like to give a, a, just a brief summary in the last five years only um, on trailers, basically on Hastings Drive, and some of the, the stuff that you saw in the video, newspaper clippings, and uh, just uh, a quick summary on the key points that I thought were interesting. In the last five years, pre-OMB ruling, senior Nor Norfolk County staff were very well aware that trailers had and were being used on Hastings Drive regularly. Senior staff consulted with County Solicitor Peter Tice at the time and determined the 1985 bylaw in force and effect allowed for vehicles on the owner's land and it was a permitted use in the Hastings Hazard Lands. Vehicles were defined at the time as having wheels, being licensed, and being mobile. This would include a motorcycle, car, truck, or trailer, meeting the noted requir requirements. Um, this interpretation was communicated to the former mayor, councillors, LPRCA, and all senior planning staff, including the chief building official, in that trailers on Hastings Drive quote, is not illegal, end quote. This interpretation was also communicated to the public on multiple occasions through several public meetings and newspaper st staff interviews, which you saw in the video there with uh, Mary Weber, uh, many years prior to the OMB ruling date. No enforcement ever occurred on Hastings Drive regarding this well-known trailer use. Um, the OMB uh, bylaw on April 16th, 2018, in point 15, basically says uh, nothing in the decision relates to any specific use that may be legal nonconforming. And uh, it's kind of hard to make sense of that, but my interpretation of it is the meaning, this means the OMB ruling is only law looking forward from this date and can't influence the past. The law pre OMB ruling was enforced only by Norfolk County senior staff and their interpretation of the 85 bylaw at that time. It's that interpretation that legally allowed for vehicles and trailers on Hastings Drive. Um, 
And lastly, the last point, both the Planning Act and case law are very clear in municipalities' inability to use new bylaws for stripping legally acquired uses. Um, and uh, just one more note, just, you know, like, our, our lot is referred to, and many others, as vacant lots. I, I, we've never considered it a vacant lot. We never considered it abandoned. We, we feel we have uses established with it from 1940 on and continue those uses. So that's it. Any questions? Councilor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Through you to Mr. Cork. Do you have a trailer on your, pro or did you, sorry, have a trailer on your property? I don't have a trailer on my property at this time, but in the past we did okay. have trailers on our property, yes. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? No questions? Okay, thank sure. you, Mr. Cork. Thank you. Okay, does anybody have any further questions for staff? Or actually, no, I'm sorry, I need a motion to receive the deputation as information. Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor Rabbits. Any further questions for staff? Councillor Huffman. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Through you to, I don't know, who would I ask regarding taxes? Is that you, James, or? Okay. Um, how are the lots, I, I know, I, I apologize to, where did he go? Oh, there, <laughs> I'm gonna use the term vacant, I know, only because I don't have another word to describe it. How are those lots taxed? Uh, through the Madam Mayor to Councillor Huffman. Uh, those, uh, I'd have to look at those specific lots individually. I know the ones that the county owns. Uh, I do, I, I happen to look at a list of those and uh, their vacant lots, various acreage, and uh, they're taxed as uh, RT or residential. Uh, but it's important for council and, and the public to know just because it's taxed as an RT doesn't mean that's what the zoning is. There are, for example, there's commercial buildings being, uh, or commercial uh, uh, enterprises being taxed commercial, but it might be zoned differently. So those two are not synonymous. Okay. Uh, so, and of the, the county lots uh, that are owned, um, the, uh, the assessment is, is less than 10,000, and maybe we collect less than $200 a year per, uh, per property. So $200 a year. So, because I'm just trying to understand this piece, is that obviously a lot that has a cottage on it is going to be taxed at a much higher rate than a lot with a trailer on it. So even if these became, if these structures, these, these vehicles were permitted to be on these lots, we have no way of really garnering any kind of increased tax rate. Is that correct? Uh, through the Mayor to Councillor Huffman, yes, you're correct. The, the only time a trailer is really taxed is if a trailer is modified to be a permanent structure. So you take the the hitch off or the, the tongue or whatever you call it. You, you, you take the tires off and you put a deck on it and so on and so forth. And that's actually a recent uh, change in, in the Assessment Act with uh, trailer parks where the, the actual, the seasonal trailers, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, are, are taxed uh, uh, differently than, than a trailer that you can, you can pull away. If, you, if there's a, a trailer that you can pull away in less than an hour, like Ms. Moyer said, mm -hmm. uh, there'd be no extra taxes on the property as a result. Okay. And would this be at the planning department um, through you, Mayor Chop, to I guess Ms. Dusling? Do any of these lots that people have had these vehicles on, do they have secondary structures? Are you aware? Or is a secondary structure not permitted? Um, through the mayor to council, the only secondary structure that I have seen on Hastings would be those um, that have change houses. The change houses, okay, all right. And does that change, and through you, back to James, um, does that change the tax piece if there's a secondary structure like a change house on the property? Or does that not make a difference? So, uh, sorry, through the mayor to Councillor Huffman. So you're getting into MPAC, your Municipal Property Assessment Corp. Uh, they are the professionals in doing assessments. 
Uh, however, if there's a permanent structure on, uh, and, it, and it has to be a minimum in, uh, in right, and I think someone had mentioned that these changed houses or whatever are under to, under 108 square feet or something. Correct, and yeah. whether they're taxable or not as part of the assessment, I, I don't know offhand the answer to that. However, okay. usually when there's a permanent structure on a property, it, it increases the value. The whole uh, the uh, systematic process of assessments is is marketable value, and okay. uh, so. If there's a permanent structure on that property that increases the marketable value of that of that property, then uh, chances are the assessment would be a little bit higher. Okay, thank you very much. Arguably, the value of the lots, if legal non-conforming was to be recognized in potential some future litigation or so on, that would potentially drive up the value of those properties because now they would be entitled to actually use the properties. Uh, yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so again, it's, it's through the Assessment Act and again, uh, MPAC are the ones that, that are the professionals when they come out and do the assessments. But uh, yeah, a lot of it is driven on marketability and uh, if, if, if those lots were be become more marketable, then uh, chances are uh, the impact would uh, change the assessments on them. And the um, property in Waterford that has a trailer on it, would it be subject to a higher tax value because it has a trailer? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I don't believe so. Uh, granny suites or garden suites, uh, they're temporary in nature, so I don't believe uh, MPAC would would, uh, would assess them. Um, assessments, typically they occur every four years as well. So you can have a, a, per, like a, a temporary trailer up for a year and, and be taken taken away and, and it would, they would never know that. So. We're just coming into an assessment year though, right? A year away, I think. Any further questions? So I, I should have, I guess, stated this perhaps at the beginning um, that I've had to uh, withdraw uh, my motion on um, that I had uh, previously put on the floor, um, which is why I remained in the chair here now. Uh, so I'll turn the floor back over to the councillors if they wish to uh, move ahead. Councillor Michelli. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> in the, the absence of uh, your original motion, I have a motion that I would like to make. That Norfolk County Council direct the county solicitor to withdraw the county's response from the civil proceeding on Hastings Drive, and that the county rely upon the outcome of the court decision, which is expected to provide guidance on the issue of legal nonconformity. Do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Roberts? Any discussion? No discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda. Um, we have the two communications. So I have a motion um, moved by Councillor Columbus, seconded by Councillor Geisens, that the correspondence from Garfield Eaton regarding farmers' agricultural industry Seek tax relief be received as information. Councillor Van Passen. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, since I'm specifically noted in this uh, communication, I'd like to make a couple comments about it. The very first thing I noticed is uh, he's done some calculations on proposed taxes. He's overstated the taxes on the residential home by $2,000, which I'm sure is just an accident because nobody would do that to support their case more than possible. I go down a little farther and he talks about uh, um, the uh, extra money that farmers get when they have poor prices. Yeah, it's called insurance. You buy some and they uh, give you money when something goes wrong. Um, 
all the comments about the services that are delivered out in the rustic countryside um, for um, ambulances and uh, fire. I've never yet heard of a situation where a field of potatoes called for an ambulance. I've only heard it from the people who live in the houses that live on the farms that pay the same amount of taxes as everyone else. Um, it's just the kind of, like we had a deputation from the Norfolk Federation of Agriculture a little while ago, explained it very logically, with facts, with figures, um, no innuendo, no manipulation, no uh, mixing apples and oranges together. And uh, I hope everybody, when they re read this or reread it, they take it at its full value, which is just about zero. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so again, that the correspondence from Garfield Eaton regarding farmers' agricultural industries seeking tax relief be received as information, moved by Councillor Columbus, seconded by Councillor Geisens. All those in favor? Opposed? Scary. Uh, next matter of communications is that the swift uh, request for letter of support regarding the CRTC appeal federal government petition be received as information and that the mayor be directed to write the Privy Council and CRTC regarding telecom regulatory policy, CRTC 2018-377, changing eligibility rules for stakeholders applying for funding for high-speed broadband internet access. It's been moved by uh, Councillor Michelli, seconded by Councillor Rabbits. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's carried. Okay, uh, next item is the approval of minutes, unless anybody wants to take a five minute break here and at the washroom, grab a coffee. Does that work? 10 minutes? Okay. We'll see you back seven fifty or 8 o'clock.
Okay. Uh, we are at number nine, which is the approval of the minutes. Uh, council minutes from January 30th, 2019. I believe that would, should have read the council and committee meeting, or council and committee meeting minutes of January 30th. Uh, sorry, uh, um, Mayor Chop, I should have put in some wording there. So, um, the, the council minutes, uh, Usually, uh, they've been circulated for review, and now we're seeing if there's any errors or omissions noted to the council minutes of January 30th. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see the next one there. My bad. Um, I don't have that motion then before me. There's no motion. Oh, there's, oh, sorry. I knew that. Any changes? Any corrections? Okay. Seeing none, we're on to item 10, reports of the committees. Uh, council and committee meeting open and close minutes from February 5th, 2019. One item so far has been polled. That's number 17. Are there any others? Okay. So a motion uh, moved by Councillor Rabbits and seconded by Councillor Columbus that the minutes 